5 until 10. Okay, your, your midterm start from lecture 1 to 4. Okay, for um, this lecture, lecture number 6, it's called Relevant Feedback and Query Expansion. Uh, looking at how do we extract uh, information from the user regarding the degree of relevancy of the document that being retrieved. So the system want to know which document is relevant to the user and at the same time adjust or suggest the uh, query expansion or how do we improve the query in order to get a better result. So we look into this uh, two main issue. How do we get the relevant feedback from the user and how do they adjust the query in order to get a better result? So, uh, most users fi find it difficult to formulate query, especially, especially, especially when they do not have a proper background about the topic. So um, in most cases, most users often need to reformulate their query to obtain the result of their interest. So uh, sometimes when we key in the keyword in the um, Google, when we do not satisfy with the result given to us, we need to reformulate the query. Either we expand the query or we change the keyword or a combination of that okay and some people also type the whole paragraph okay so um, the first query formulation should be treated as an initial attempt to retrieve re relevant information so the system will search the document and then rank the document and they will display the uh, top and rank document, okay? Top and rank doc document, okay? And um, the document will be analyzed for relevance and used to improve initial query. So, so whatever we get uh, display on our screen, we will look into what document is relevant and what document are not relevant okay and by looking at the percentage here we will change the keyword okay so over here we check the relevant or non-relevant document and we provide the feedback to our initial query and change the query Okay, the, the process of query modification actually has two phases. The first one is called relevant feedback in which um, the user provide information on relevant document to a query. So this is normally uh, done um, two ways, explicit and implicit. We will look into that. How do we get the uh, information regarding the relevancy of the document with respect to the query okay and the second phase is how do we expand the query so that uh, we are going to the right direction in finding the correct document so these are the two main stages so this is our initial query okay so um assuming that the top four nearest are relevant to the query so let's say let's suppose this is your relevant query okay. so this is your initial query so your initial query here so this is in a 3d space line. okay so assuming that we have these four document and what we want to do is not that one including that one this one i think the the negative also consider okay so 
what we want to do is we want to reformulate the query to get better result. So we want to move the point here to here so that it will be at the center of the four nearest that are relevant to the query. Okay, so meaning that um, when we move from here to here, we are changing the query, the keyword in our query. Okay, so so that is the uh, process that we have. Okay, so if I remove all the so basically we have the initial query, and we assume the top four nearest. Um, so the top four nearest is this one. Okay. Then we move the query in the middle by reformulating the query to get better results. Okay. Um, like I mentioned just now, there are two basic approaches for, of feedback method. The first one is called explicit feedback in which we interview or we get response from the user which document are relevant to the query. So, so we can ask for feedback through survey, review boxes, or input fields attached to reg registration or sign up form. So this is more like uh, actively um, getting the input from the user through survey or forms. So the second one is called implicit feedback in which we are looking at the behavior of the um, user. So meaning that um, implicitly means not proactive, means we get the in information based on some action from the user, for example, where they click, um, what pages they watch, what search term they use. So all this can be, uh, can be captured um, in a computer. Uh, we monitor which link they click and then how many times they spend on certain page. And then we look at the term that they key in. Okay. So um, having to know that we have two ways on how to extract the um, relevance feedback from the user. Um, we have a framework. So let's consider a set of document, DR, that are known to be relevant to the current query. So over here we have um, set of document which is relevant okay, with respect to the query. So in relevant feedback, the document in the set of document are used to transform Q into a modified query. Okay. So what we have here is that we have query, and then we use the re relevant document here to, to transform the Q to become modified query. So based on the relevant document that we have. Okay. However, obtaining information on document um, relevant to the query requires the direct interference of the user. So this is not uh, practical because we we have to interview the user. Um, in but this is a, a best way to validate uh, to validate to get the best result. And um, yeah, so this is one of the problems. Most users are unwilling to provide this information, particularly in the web, because it's very time consuming. So um, to solve this problem, we can look at the document that they have clicked on, or 
we can look at the terms belonging to the top document in the result set. So, so what happened here is that given the document that we provide to them, we will look at the terms um, that use in the document that presented to the user. So basically, we are extracting the terms from the top document. Okay. And lastly, in most cases, it is expected that the feedback cycle will produce results of higher quality. Okay, so um, we look at the document, they, they click on, and then we look at the uh, term belonging to the doc to the document, and then they click again, and the cycle will improve the. Um, The result. Okay, a feedback cycle is composed of two basic steps. Like I mentioned just now, we determine the feedback information and uh, through the survey, click, and then Next one is how do we transform query queue to take this information effective, effectively into account. So always we, re, we remember that a feedback cycle consists of two. One is obtaining the information from the user. And the second one is to transform the query queue into modified query. So the whole point is how do we get the best result for our query? Everyone okay? Okay, I will proceed. So um, this illustrates the whole process. Of, so initial query and then based on the four relevant document, we adjust the query. So th this is the transform query or the modified query. So in an explicit relevant feedback cycle, remember explicit, we are looking at where they click, what pages they look at, and then what term they use. Okay. Um, so We will use the user click, and also we look at the um, document that is of interest to the user in the context of the current query. So this is the you. You key in the query, and then this is the result, and then you pick which one is the best one. No. Um, the user pick which document are relevant with respect to the query and then they will change the query and get the new result okay so this is relevant feedback so basically this is um explicit okay for the implicit one um we look at what they click click on the result so by clicking it means that they are important with respect to the query. So they will get uh, a new result when they modify the user query. So this is uh, click feedback or implicit. So we can say that this is what? This is explicit. This is implicit. So in an implicit relevant feedback cycle, the feedback information is derived implicitly by the system. So um, there are two ways on how do we compile this implicit feedback information. Uh, the first one is called local analysis. Local analysis, we are looking at the uh, document itself um, compared to the global, uh, global analysis. We are looking at 
external sources such as treasurers um, or other external resources that we have. So this one, we are looking at the internal document only. Okay, so the global one, they will use the external resources or reference in order to perform the implicit feedback information. Uh, we will not cover this, but we will cover this one. Okay. So this is just to give you an idea uh, on how do we use local analysis uh, to compile the implicit feedback information that we have for those documents. Okay. So this is an illustration only. So uh, they compare between the local analysis and also the global analysis. So, which means that we are looking at the top result, we, we do clustering, we look at the content of the, the document, and then we modify the query, then we get new result. Compared to the global analysis, we are referring to other external resources that we have. Okay. So, those are the differences between local analysis and global analysis. Global analysis, we require external resources to um, modify the query. Okay, okay. Um, explicit relevant feedback. Like I mentioned just now, um, for the explicit one, the user will examine the document and marks those that are relevant to the query. So they manually um, tell us which document are relevant to them. Okay. So once we done that one, then um, they will select the important terms from the, the document that has been identify as relevant so we use this term later on when people want to perform the query and using the term that we have selected we will enhance them or we will transform them enhancing the importance of this term in a new query formulation okay we improve we expand we change we use different words and so on Okay, we select important terms and then we enhance the importance of this term in the new query, mean, meaning that we are reformulating the query that we have. Okay, um, the, new the new query should be moved towards the re relevant document and away from the non-relevant one. So meaning that if we have the initial query, we, we want to have the initial query to be moved to the area in which more relevant document can be uh, linked to this query and away from all the non-relevant document. Okay. So um, one of the example is called Rokio method. So Rokio method can be used to perform this, um, this effect. And early experiments have shown good improvement in precision and small test collection. So um, for the relevant feedback, it presents the following characteristic. It shields the user from the detail of the query. And it breaks down the whole search task into a sequence of small steps which are easier to understand. Okay, so, so whatever we type in, um, we will not know what process will, will be done to the um, query that we have typed. And then um, if you want to learn more, we uh, have a sequence of small steps that can be easily understood. How do we perform this? Okay. okay. Um, this method called Rokio, like I mentioned just now, is we wanted to have the query to be moved closer to 
relevant document and away from non-relevant document. Okay. So um, why do we want to have the initial query to be moved to the relevant document? Because we assume that document identify as relevant to have the same similarity with the query or among themselves. Okay. And all the non-relevant document have term with vector which are not similar from the relevant document. Okay. So um, the Rocky method is used to reformulate the query such that it gets closer to the neighborhood of the relevant document and away from the non-relevant document. We will show you later on. Okay. So, for example, like this, our initial query is here. But uh, looking at the non-relevant document here, um, if we are here, we are still near to the non-relevant document here and here. So what we wanted to do is we want to move the query, the revised query around here so that it will be surrounded or it will have a neighborhood of relevant document. Okay. So how do we actually perform this? So let us define the terminology regarding the pro, uh, processing of a given queue. So let's suppose we have set of re relevant document among the document retrieve. So this is your relevant document being retrieved using query queue. We also have the size. So and I'll refer to the number of document in the relevant document retrieve. So that is the size. Okay, we we take the magnitude of the um, relevant document retrieve. Okay, and also we have the uh, set of non-relevant document among the document retrieve. So it could be here. And we take the size also. So this is the size of the non-relevant document retrieve. And if we, and of course we have a collection of a bigger uh, uh, document. So um, that is set of relevant document among all all document in the collection. So AR is um, no. That is overlapping. We have this one. Yeah. So this one is a set of all relevant document. Okay. So this is important. This is also important. So this is part of this. Okay. So this plus this will be the all retrieved document. Okay, so um, I suppose all relevant document should be up to here only, lah, not including that one. Okay, so all these are relevant document. But the one that being retrieved is only this, including the non-relevant document. Okay, so. Um, by having this knowledge, we can use this knowledge in order to move the initial query to a position in which they are closer to the re relevant document but away from the non-relevant document. So consider that the set CR is a known in advance. So so we know already in advance, this is a set of relevant document because of this. Then the best query vector for this 
distinguishing the relevant form uh, from the non-relevant document is given by this formula. So this is the vector of the document. Okay. So, but this this document belong to. Um, it said here for all document vector that do not belong to the relevant uh, document. I will sum up all the weightage, and then I will take the average. Lah. I will take the average and for this one for all document that belong to the relevant document I will add up the weightage and then I will take the average course so from the relevant document I minus the non-relevant document then I get the optimized query vector Okay, how do we illustrate that one? Um, so assuming that this is your non-relevant document. So this is your relevant document. Okay, so the vector for, um, this is based on this um, illustration. The vector for the non-relevant document is this way. The vector for the relevant document is this way. So based on the formula that we have here, uh, in which we subtract the non-relevant document from the relevant document. So basically, we have this illustration. So this is your relevant, and then your minus in that direction minus and this is your optimized query okay so this is without the query okay without the query if we have the initial query like in the second image here so what we want to do is in order for us to modify the query we have to add with the relevant document but we have to minus the non-relevant document and this is our modified query okay if you okay can you type number one Okay. Any question that you want to ask or you need me to, to clarify more? No? Okay, let's take a look at some example here. How do how does this actually happen in our calculation? so we have this formula so this is our non-relevant document and this is our relevant document okay and um, this is when we do not have the query when we do not have the query and this is when we have the query so this is our query plus the relevant document minus the non-relevant document. Okay. And normally we have a constant here, the alpha, the beta, and the, what you call this, gamma. So um, normally they use a constant value for all the symbol. So this is the reasonable value that has been um, tested before so this is the uh, value that we can use when we want to compute the modified query 
Okay, let's suppose we have um, this query. Okay, uh, this this query. Uh, let me show you. Um, let's suppose we have this webpage. This is the TFIDF for for query. Uh, this is the webpage for each of the term: Chinese, Japan, Tokyo, Macau, Beijing, Shanghai. And we have the red one. The red one denotes the non-relevant document. So this is non-relevant. And this is relevant document. Okay. So what we can do is we can take the average of this and put them here and the average of this. Okay. Remember that in the formula that we have, um, this is we summing up all the weightage and we divide by the number of records that they have. Okay. So basically, we are taking the average and put them here. So now we only have two entry. One is the uh, non relevant, and the other one is relevant. Okay, from five to two. Okay. So now we wanted to perform what is the weightage for the uh, modified query. So for the modified query, we we just take the initial query uh, plus 0.75. Um, so plus because we are using this one. and also this one as a constant. So 0 0.75 and 0 0.15. Let me erase first too many. Okay, so once we multiply, we get this and then the final value will be this. So these are the weightage of the terms that we have in our TFIDF table. So basically what happened yang di sini ini? So, so basically we have the query and then we take the average of the relevant document minus the non-relevant document, then we get the modified query. So these are the examples. So um, we have exercise for this one. Um, you, you can do it later on, but you you take the one the one in the smart version three, okay? Smart version three dot ums dot edu dot mile. So that is your assignment number three, I believe. Okay. Um, Okay, um, now let's take a look at the explicit feedback through click. So this is um, the system will uh, monitor which document you click and then you can make some policy or some assumption that we can use as a reference when we want to consider whether that document is re relevant or not. Okay. So when we um, use the click reflect preference we always look at where they click which document they click and um, this is easier and you are not interfering with the user because we can just capture the um, the history of clicking okay and um, based on the the history of click 
or what they click, we can make some assumption. Uh, for example, let's suppose we we have a ranking function, a ranking function with respect to the query. Let me change this one. So this is a ranking with respect to the query I, and we want to ranking the document that we have. Okay. So we have, um, if we have R1, this is the first ranking, second ranking, and third one. Okay. And we use this symbol if we say that the user click the document. And we are saying that the k top result is preferable to the k minus n. So, so, so that means um, the earlier one is more preferred compared to the early the um, the one at the back. I will show you uh, something like this. So, so let's suppose we have all the result that we have and we have the ranking and the user click r3 r5 and r10 so only three documents are clicked by the user okay so um this behavior does not allow us to make definitive statement about the relevance of result 3 5 10 we cannot tell which one is more important However, it does allow us to make statement on the relative pre uh, preference of this user. Contohnya, okay, two distinct strategy to capture the preference relation in this case are as follow. So, for example, if we have a check on the K result, then the K result is greater than um, the K minus N. So and refer to the number of document for all the um, r k minus n that was not click okay so for example for, uh, let me, for example like this um we click this one so that means k no, the R3 is better preferred compared to R2 and R1. Okay. And we also click this R5. So that means R5 is more preferred compared to R4, R2, and R1. Okay. So, but we cannot tell the relationship between these two. And for this one, so that means the result of the 10th one is more preferred compared to the 9th, the 8th, the 7th, the 6th, and the 4th, and the 2nd, and the 1st one. Okay, so this is based on the skip above uh, strategy. We also have the second one, um, the second one. Uh, skip previous, so skip previous um, preference relation saying that if we check the K result and the K minus one result has not been clicked, then we are saying that this one, the K result is better than K minus one. Okay, so how does it differ from the skip above? Okay, for the Skip previous strategy. Uh, let me erase this. Okay. Using the same result that we have, we are saying that the R3 is um, preferred compared to R2 only. Um, R5 is preferred over R4. Okay. And R10 is more pre uh, preferred compared to R9. Okay. 
So uh, based on this, the skip above strategy produce more preference uh, relation uh, compared to the skip previous. Uh, for example, like if we use the skip above, that means we are saying that R3 is more preferred compared to this tool. And this one is for second interest. So this is the um, preference relation that we can use with respect to what document they have clicked. Okay, so we can use the skip above strategy and also the skip previous strategy. Okay, um, there are also a case in which um, when we key in the first, uh, the query, the first result they did not click anything. So when they mo modify the uh, query and they get the result here, then they have to click here. Okay. So um, this is what we call the query chain in which the first result produced no relevant document after changing the query, then we get two relevant documents. Okay. So, um, so we have two preference relation with respect this to this one. Okay. So, like I mentioned, this is the first result. This is the second result. Uh, only in the second result, we have a click to that document. Okay. So we could imply these two preference relation. One is called top one, no click earlier. Um, this can be used if there exists the second list. No, the second K list. The second list, no the K result in the second list, okay? This is the K result in the second list such that uh, that the K, K result is being clicked and then we, we are saying that the J result is greater than R1, which is from the first result for J less than or equal to 10. So how does it looks like here? Okay. So in our example, we, we click S2. So we are saying that um, based on this, all, all the results here all the result here is better than R1. See, all compared to R1. And we are saying that all the second list result are better than the R1. Okay. Um, similar to this one, the top two no click earlier is just expanding them to two. So we are looking at R1 and R2 here. So we are saying that all these second list results are better than the first item in the first list. And similar to this, um, for all the result obtained from the second list are better than the second item in the first list. Okay, so these are the uh, preference relation that we can um, imply in our assumption when, when we want to uh, summary and summarize the document that being retrieved. Um, the time now is 
22 past 3. Okay, let me stop here. But you do have the assignment, assignment number 4, I think. Here. Uh, let me go through this one very fast because I think you you have done this one before. Remember this? This is term time correlation, right? You have done this one before. Okay. So let me go to the uh, local analysis. Uh, remember that we have local and also we have global analysis. The local analysis we are looking at the uh, the local resources that we have. Okay, so we are deriving the feedback information from the document retrieve for a given query key. So um, there are two uh, strategies here. The first one is called local clustering. Uh, clustering referring to a process in which we uh, group the document into cluster and they say, share the same similarity. Um, standard procedure is to quantify the term correlation and use that correlated term for query expansion. So um, we have done the term term correlation last time. So, so we can use them to expand the query. Okay, like, like computer science or software engineering, they come together. So when we perform the term correlation, we will have high score for this uh, combined term. Um, in order for us to define what is called association cluster, so first we need to define query and we let the local document set. So this is the local document. This is the size of the uh, document or the number of document. And we have a list of local vocabulary, uh, a list of distinct word for all the document that we have here. And also we have the weightage. Um, in this case, we are looking at the frequency of occurrence of the term. AI in that document, and that document belong to the local document set. And we have a matrix. So this matrix is called term document matrix that will have um, V row, number of row and N number of column. Okay. So the matrix will consist of the um, frequency that we have. And also, we have the transpose of matrix L. So we can build the term term correlation using this formula. So this formula can be used to tell um, which two term are closely related to each other. Okay. So for example, like this, you know already how to compute the weightage for keyword one in document one. You know already how to compute the weightage for keyword one in document two and so on. Okay. So we have the matrix here. So let's suppose we are using the TFIDF line. Uh, we can take the transpose because the formula here is we take the matrix and then multiply them with the, the transpose of the matrix. And we get this. So how do we compute that? Um, I think I show you this one already. Okay, so we take that one, multiply with this row column, row column, then we get this. Okay, so V1 times V11, and then V1 times, no, W12 times W12, and we have this. 
So we will repeat again this and this one and this one again, that one until we have this. Okay. So once we get the value here, um, the maximum value is one, meaning that they are highly correlated. So since keyword one and keyword one are the same, normally you will get one here, one here, and one here. And you may have different value here. Okay. So, but we don't care about this because they are referring to themselves. We are, what we wanted to know, how close is keyword one with keyword two and keyword one and keyword three? It, it will depend on the value that we have here. So um, whatever value that we have here, we will choose the highest one. So maximum value will be one. So this is what they try to say that um, each element that belong to the um, matrix expresses a correlation between term U and V. Okay, term U and V. Okay. So if we have this, so this value will um, express the correlation between K1 and K2. Uh, this, um, this, one, this one will tell you the correlation relation between K3 and K2. Okay. The higher the number of documents in which the two terms co occur, the stronger the correlation. Okay. Sometimes the um, value is too big. So, what we wanted to know is we want to normalize them so that the largest value will be one. So, we could use this formula in order to get the normalized value. So notice that this is the no, uh, normalized value. This is the all value that we have. Um, so we just refer to the matrix that we have. Okay. So I think this is your assignment number four. So I think that's all. Um, do you have any question? If you okay, I want to know. Um, siapa lagi still pay attention? Uh, can you type number three? Lebih kurang 25 lah. Okay. So, do you have any question? Um, what What I can say that bahagian yang important di sini adalah this one lah. So, this one. How do you compute the term term correlation and then how do you perform the normalization okay and also you need to know this the rock your method how do you move um or how do you modify the query based on the given relevant document and also non-relevant document and also based on the query that we have. Okay, how do we move? How do we modify the query? So you need to know how to use the formula. Lah. Okay, so any question?
So as I promised, one hour lecture only. Semua oke. Okay. You find it easy to understand or difficult to understand? 